Welcome to the Wilson Center's Middle East program, Art in Mena series. My name is Brooke Sherman, and today I'll be speaking with Dr. Hana Malala from Iraq, who is an artist and educator now based in London. She received her bachelor's in painting from the Academy of Fine Arts in Baghdad, and later an MA and PhD from the University of Baghdad. Since then, Dr. Malala has focused much of her work and research on the impact of conflict, particularly its cultural implications. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks. So I always start off by asking our guests just to share more about their journey in the career um, as an artist. So when did you first become interested in art and what did the beginning of your career look like um, going to school in Iraq? Yeah, I I started very early in my age, like uh, 14 years, uh, when I was just 14. And in, uh, I started my study uh, art in, uh, in a fine, uh, fine art institute uh, in Baghdad, which is, um, I mean, before College of Art, which is four, five years. And I study first three foundation, three years, and then a branch making for two years. After that, I, I did four years bachelor for uh, uh, oil painting, and then I I did my MA in semiotic, and then my PhD in um, uh, in logic order in Mesopotamia uh, uh, drawing, uh, and this is my uh, when I study uh, when I start to study. But I am not from family which is um, there's yani yeah, there's uh, I mean. Uh, not artistic family. There is no one artist in, in my family. My father lawyer, and but just I have this passion for art and to study art. And then when I started, it just like like it is like hobby or something, not very serious. But after one year, start very 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 serious, and they start to like they said I am fighter to get my position. Even when I was very young, and then that's helped me uh, to I mean to build my career in good way in Baghdad. And when I was um, when I was just a student, I start to be I start to 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 work as illustrator for kids magazine when in third year which is as well this has helped me financially and to be independent and uh, to to be very free from a lot of i mean from a lot of situation as a woman as a woman in iraq and then uh, and this give me as well some stability for, with the financial stabilities and then after that i um, uh, i then i continue to study uh, my to get my bachelor in painting oil painting and uh, i am lucky because this journey like 14 years of study art uh, the top artists of iraqi artists i study under them so from the first five years, there's a lot of a lot of great Iraqi artists like Rafa Nasri, Shakir Hassan Al Said, Mohammed Mohardin, all the top artists. And then when I finished this, I went to the to College of Art as well, the top artists. So I am lucky enough in that golden time in Baghdad which is the art booming, and it is uh, Baghdad. It is the the hub city of art for Arab world. I'm happy to, I'm, I'm lucky to be in that situation. So what I would like to say, uh, so I built myself there and I stayed there until the end of 2006. November, I left Baghdad to to Amman and then from Amman to my uh, fellowship, uh, my artist residency uh, residency in Institute de Monde Arab in, in Paris, and then to London. So I left. So when I was in Baghdad, I was established artist uh, in the heart of art movement. I have my career. I know the test of um, of the test of. Uh, of uh, of art uh, and i fit with the movement because i know 
even uh, even there is um, i mean even there is um, uh, i mean uh, in last last years when i was there uh, there is sanction which is cut uh, our connection from world, from world but uh, which is this is the problem for me but um, at that time i i i flourish in baghdad and i built my career i i i I uh, I was very uh, rebellious uh, uh, person, so I I you know I with the with the patriarchy patriarchy uh, in uh, 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 society in in Baghdad to be uh, to be unmarried and get my career and this so this. Uh, uh, took from me a lot of energy and um, uh, braveness. So it is, yeah. So uh, this is my my career. Yeah, yeah. I mean in Baghdad, there is different career when I left. Yeah. Yes, it sounds like you've um, had quite a flourishing experience when you were in Baghdad. Being able to go to school at that time, I'm sure, was very um, a very dynamic period for you as a young person. And I was wondering kind of what your experience was as a woman artist at the time. Um, it sounds like you were able to study under some incredible figures in the art scene, but did you ever face any resistance either from within or outside of the art community being a woman? Or were you able to really just demonstrate your independence and um, kind of forge ahead, if you will? Yeah, no, it's in Baghdad, really, they welcome me, I mean, as a woman, I have no resistance. And I built my career, I, I, maybe the, some people, they said I am a fighter. So I fight for my right, I mean, uh, so, and uh, this helped me even in, in, in that society, I mean, in Iraq, in Baghdad, especially in that time, uh, Iraq, uh, society is open was open i mean not like now and uh, open for uh, for women to work and study and uh, do whatever i mean and there is uh, some uh, some uh, people and uh, i mean men who stand by my, by me so to to help me like my my teacher shakar hassan al said or other people uh, i have good connection with the with the with the intellectual people in uh, in Baghdad, uh, and uh, I did uh, I work as illustrator as well when I was study my bachelor in um, Al Jumhuriya uh, newspaper when I left uh, the kids magazine. So in in this time in in that time uh, in that time when I was illustrator in this very important uh, journal in Baghdad uh, give me as well connection with the intellectual people intellectual people as well my study in academy so I I live the dynamic life as you said and this is give me a lot of connection inside um, inside the country but in the end this is just inside the country I mean after that we our generation as you know we live uh, we lived under three wars uh, two of them international. And then there is long sanction, which is 13 years, which is uh, cutting us from a connection from the world. And in the top of that, of this, uh, of that, uh, there is uh, militarization, military, military, militarization <laughs> regime. So uh, this is all this, um, I mean, I don't know if it is shaped my art or our art generation, but definitely my art. Uh, and especially when I left, when I left more, when I left to London, this violent, this life, I mean, this specific life really shaped my art um, when I well, uh, when I have been just a distant from my life in Iraq. So this is just give you some scope about my life yeah, there, yeah. Yes, and I'd like to learn more about that transition from Iraq to, to Paris. But before that, I do want to better understand how the military conflicts affected the art community in specific. I know, again, you had said that there was a very flourishing art scene, very strong art scene in Baghdad. And then right after that, several um, subsequent uh, conflicts. And so 
how how did it both physically so in terms of the infrastructure that was available to artists but also culturally affect um the platform that that artists had and then in addition to that how do you think it's kind of affected the trajectory of art over the last two decades in iraq yeah, yeah, of course, it is big affection. I mean, from 80s, I mean, when there's a Iran-Iraqi war uh, started, it is our, uh, our colleague just, they joined the war. Uh, even the artists, they have to go to uh, to to uh, to do their uh, duty as a, in, uh, in, uh, in the front, uh, front line uh, of war. And this is really affect all the scenes start the affection from that year. And after that, in 1991, which is, I call it the big turning point in Iraq, because after 1991, everything changed to just the curve, which is very strong down. So, and this is, this is really affect the, not just the art scene, affect all of us, because with the sanction with the, about material, about uh, to exhibit it, we, 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 we cut with the, the big cut from connection with the world and there is no uh, art material, nothing, uh, I mean, to, to do art. As well, we live in this isolation uh, community. So there is no, we haven't seen any original artwork. We couldn't, on the top of this, there, the, the travel uh, had been, um, Banned, so there is no travel. Just there is we one one country we can travel by by land, not by air. Uh, just uh, uh, Amman, Jordan. So it is. Uh, this is definitely affect the art, uh, the the art, the trajectory of art. And I think now the art in Iraq with this isolation and this. It is not in the scene as a very good Arab country, even not like Beirut or uh, Morocco or other country, even not like Iran, the region. So this is this is the effect from these 20 or more than 20 years, 30 years, 30 years of isolation and uh, destruction, all the in, uh, until now. And I am saying you from here, all the institution in Iraq collapsed and broken until now. I know there is a, a college of art now. I am in contact with them. Uh, there is college in Baghdad. There is college in Al Qadisiya Diwaniya. There is college in Babel. There is one in Mosul of art, but it is the institution of art. I visit Iraq last May. May. They invite me uh, for to do a workshop in art center in Baghdad. It is all, it is not like before. Uh, definitely, definitely, it is big gap between what what was the art scene and what is now. So, so uh, definitely, there is big affection, and I don't know when there is some personal um, personal uh, I mean uh, activities by people to do something here and here and some study here, but this is it will not feed something big in Iraq unless. There is, I mean, return back a very good institution, very good art scene. The people can travel until now. If uh, if I had Iraqi passport, I I can't travel. I couldn't travel to any country. So now, just because I had the British passport, I can travel and see and go there and there. All Iraqis, they can. They can't, they can't travel, they can't get visa, or it is very, very hard to get visa to travel. So it is the same situation. It, so, and this is definitely affect the art scene. And there is the money as well. There is no buyer, no collect, the collectors. Uh, and if there's some collector, it is very limited. And it is very, I don't, I don't, I don't find the taste of art in, in, in good way there. And this is effect. I mean, if there is no collectors to feed and to buy and to make this dynamic, so as well it is, it is, uh, it is hard. But I mean, but there is some artists really good now in Iraq, inside Iraq, and their art start to be appear here and here and here. I mean, I'm speaking now about the artists who are 
still are in Iraq, inside Iraq, not outside, not Iraqi artists outside Iraq, Iraq uh, Iraqi artists outside the Iraq. Outside Iraq, there's many artists, they got their international uh, international international uh, reputation but very uh, very few you can't count them in in your one hand i mean very very few yeah right and um it sounds like there are artists and um art education institutions that are trying to rebuild the seen in Iraq, but without an enabling environment, as you had mentioned, the resources um, that are that can build them up, there's only so much progress that individual artists can make. Um, yeah. And so I was kind of my my next question was about the Iraqi diaspora and what role um, individuals like you and other artists or even Iraqis who are not necessarily in the art scene can do to support um, the people in Iraq who are trying to rebuild the scene. But it sounds like there's quite a few limitations for your ability to kind of bring resources in and, um, and you know, support them. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, it is it is not about uh, to do something personally. I mean, I not that person go there and do something, and this is our do research or help some people group of people it doesn't work. I mean, it's work. It's fine. It is give some. I mean, uh, some something, but in the end, it is the big uh, scene need. Uh, uh, an, uh, uh, I mean, an institution with the good resources, as you said, and it is the uh, as well. It is connection. This institution should has connection with the uh, with the outside, and as well the language. I mean, the, until now, a, a lot of writing inside Iraq in Arabic, so no nobody read it or care about it. They are outside the circle, big circle, which I call it loop, a closed loop of Western culture, which is nobody can enter enter this or hard, very hard to enter it unless you have the language and you speak the same language to enter it. So uh, here it is, I mean, uh, it is a big thing. I mean, I don't know when and how it will be, but there is some people who they try, and there's some academic like Nadasha Boot or other, they tried, or they, ha they, they, they tried to do something, I mean, so um, I I I don't know. It's actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. I do. I have my research. I I have connection with Iraq with uh, some artists, but it, in the end, it is pers personal research with the team inside Iraq. So it, it is, doesn't work. I mean, just this research because I need them for specific research about archaeology. This is nothing with the institution. Yeah. That's a, a good transition. I would like to hear more about your research. You said that you were very in, heavily affected or influenced by um, the your the period that you were still in Baghdad um, studying and, and starting your early career, and then you transitioned to Paris. So can you speak more about your research and then also maybe speak a little bit about how it affects your work as an artist? Yeah, I mean, uh, first, I mean, when I moved from from Iraq to um, uh, to Paris for my uh, for my uh, art residency, and then I moved to London after uh, one year, uh, and I reached London in two thousand, I in two thousand seven, and I really I I I faced different uh, art world. I mean, I, I have faced, I had faced a really, a really different art, uh, art world, and this is, uh, and I have experienced what I call it, um, hegemonic, uh, cultural uh, circle, uh, of Western, and then which is hard for women, female uh, Iraqi female artists in her, uh, in her late forties. Uh, to come to enter this. So I found there is three ways for me. I mean, there is three ways. Either, either continue to do the same practice, which I used to do in Iraq, with the flavor of nostalgic, like other artists, which I, I don't like it, or uh, just stop doing art and uh, just enjoy my survival. 
because I survived these wars and um, uh, and this very very dangerous situation, or start from scratch. So and and really, when I I I I reached London, I felt my career wiped out, and then I. I said, uh, and then I choose the. I have chosen the the last option, which is start from scratch. Even I uh, kept using some material and technique from old uh, old practice, but to deliver a new concept. And this is a start. I mean, when and and I was really with my fellowship. I reached London with the fellowship at, uh, in SOAS, in the School of Oriental and African Studies, which really gave me very good option to to start to build my um, connection in London. And then I start really to like with the, this big hunger to see the art scene and the art world with this big city, the hub of world in art. In London, and this is really quickly changed my practice and uh, my view to art. And I start with the uh, just feed me. I mean, with the new thing, and uh, I I established my studio from two thousand seven in London. I start to do connection and start to do artwork. But until now, I don't know how I know how uh, how Iraq uh, Iraq. Art world in Iraq perceived me before, but I don't know how the culture here in 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 UK perceived me or internationally. So here it is. I'm 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 not. I didn't study in London art. I reached London very not. I mean not young. So here it is, and this is affect my my work but i i'm trying to i mean to enter many many uh, i mean go ahead with the many options but uh, and I concentrate on my uh, my research i mean from the beginning uh, my artwork based on research and this has become clearer and stronger now. And so I have research and I'm working in about archaeology, which is started from 2016, uh, about, about Mesopotamia specifically, and about landscape, about colonialism, and about Mesopotamia. And so I work in this research not because I am Iraqi, but because I see the Mesopotamia with the international global context. And then I have team to work with them. So we did exhibition about this, about landscape, and this uh, about land landscape, ancient landscape in, of Mesopotamia, and about uh, smuggling and blundering the artifacts of Mesopotamia from 1880, 80, and uh, to to Western museums and how this. The artifacts, when the removal of artifacts affect the, the landscape, as well about the ownership of this heritage. So I am speaking about here about Mesopotamia, not as I said, not as Iraqi, but with the as a global context. So we have a team of six artists, who, all of them are from Iraq, inside Iraq, and uh, each artist um, hair or his birthplace place one archaeological site. So they have this close connection with the archaeological site. And we have six or five researchers. We have uh, Mothrob, we have Zainab Bahrani, Professor Zainab Bahrani, we have um, uh, Annie Webster, and we have Paul Collins and myself. So this is big team for this for this project, which and we, we, I call it I call it a practice research. So because this entanglement between research and visual art. And so this is, and from two, uh, from, I started from 2006, we did a very big exhibition at the Brunei Gallery in 2000, this year, uh, finished in, uh, in March this year, last March. Uh, and in the Brunei Gallery, they gave us two levels and we exhibit this this project. And the, we are lucky because Brunei Gallery is just distant from the British Museum, which is the hub of colonialism and smuggling of Mesopotamia artifacts. And we did a workshop around this. So this is, this give me some, I mean, to move between London and Iraq. 
So this is about, I mean, uh, this research. But in the end, just I would like to shed light about my practice. I mean, as I said, my the violence in Iraq wars and sanction and all this violent life affect my practice. And my practice, when I came here and I coined coin the, the term um, uh, ruins technique and ruins technique act actually the the ruin or concept or on, on ruin reside on the process of the artwork uh, and of uh, and uh, uh, as well what, what I would like uh, uh, the process in, not in the final artwork and as well I celebrate uh, to destroy material and to produce this technique so this is about about my approach. So, so this two things, my personal about destruction, about ruins technique, about what I, uh, why, what I produce from artwork and there is my research side. So this is the two, I, I, balance, I balance them, yeah. So this is about my practice, yeah. Thank you so much for sharing that. And um, I, I want to, Kind of emphasize the point that you you mentioned that um, in in your research and also your your work, of course, there's such a visual element to it, you know, and and I think that's something that's so cool about the intersection between art and research is that you're not just you know putting your findings in a book or in an article, you know, you're really making it accessible to people. You know, you'd mentioned that you exhibited and. I think it just really elevates the the work that you're doing, but also the accessibility of it. And it makes it more accessible to consumers and to the public audience, um, not just, you know, in your in your not academic circle, but just in your in, in London, it, it really makes it more um, consumable by people in Iraq and in Europe and um, really elevates the issues that you're researching. And it sounds like you've been able to do the same thing in your, your personal work where you had to really start fresh in a new context, you know, in a completely new context and, and learn your new audience and learn your new environment. And while still keeping, you know, that old life as as a kind of an integral part of your work. So um, thank you so much for sharing all of this with our audience. And it was a real pleasure to speak with you today. Um, and we will continue following the work that comes out of the research that you are currently working on. Yeah, thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you.